One year ago this week, a Russian attack in Ukraine in the early days of the war gravely wounded our correspondent Benjamin Hall and tragically killed beloved Fox cameraman Pierre Zakshevsky and young Ukrainian producer Sasha Kushnova. Now, their stories are being told in the most moving way in this new documentary that everyone must see. It is truly riveting. It has never before seen footage of this story. The documentary is called Sacrifice and Survival, a story from the front line. It premieres Sunday night at 9 o'clock Eastern. And I, I screened it yesterday with a group of us here. And I have to tell you, it was so incredibly well done by Miriam Safari and Dan Cohen and so many other people that were involved in this. So get your whole family together on Sunday night and make sure that you all sit down and watch this because on so many levels, it's a story that everyone can relate to. But Ben's wife, Alicia, is obviously a central part of this really moving story. And we're about to hear from Alicia. She's in London where uh, she is with their children, with their beautiful little girls and joining Ben, the two of them together, talking about this for the first time. They had very difficult decisions along the way to protect their three children, Honor, Iris and Hero, including Alicia staying with them in London during Ben's grueling, triumphant and incredibly speedy recovery at Brook Army Medical Center in Texas. One doctor said it would take two years, but he was not on Ben's schedule <laughs> to get back home. Ben and Alicia were, re were reunited this moment, which is one of my favorite pictures from all of this on the plane five months later on the tarmac in London. Watch. There was that moment when I was sitting on the plane, I was waiting to see Alicia. It kind of felt like a first date, you know, like I was so nervous about it. and. Uh, I didn't know what to say to her. I just remember we just, we just hugged. We just, then I cried, you know, because we'd made that decision not to be together. We'd made the decision for her to stay with the daughters. And so that was bringing back together everything that, that I'd fought for, that we'd all fought for. Uh, incredible. I'm honored to be joined by Ben Hall here in New York and his wife, Alicia, from London. Ben, it's, uh, we've said it all week, but it's so great to see you. And great to have you back here at Fox. We all are such huge admirers of your work over all these years, and we're just thrilled to see you doing so well. Well, thank you so much. And I can tell you that this is a real honor for me right now because it's the <laughs> first time I've been on air with Alicia and she's joining us now. Yeah. And the whole story, this whole story <laughs> is about Alicia. It was about trying to get home to my family. And so, uh, you know, she's the one who should be getting far more credit than I should throughout this whole story. So, you know, Alicia, you guys have a great love story. Uh, you know, as you watch this and as you worked um, with the producers at this, in this documentary, you know, what do you want people to understand about your family and about Ben and about the love that the two of you share? Oh, gosh. Um, we, we got through it is all I can say. And I think anyone in our position probably hopefully would have done the same. Um, you put your children first and you and your husband together um, decide uh, how you manage your, you know, how you manage tragic situations like we've had. And um, I, I think, yeah, we, we got through it. it. What comes across in the documentary is how supportive you always were of Ben's work, as difficult as it was for you at times, that you understood that this is who he was and is. And this is what this is the passion that oh, drove absolutely. him. Absolutely, absolutely. It's um, it, it, the job that the job that he does and did, and it's incredibly important. It, he gives voices to people that don't have a voice. Um, I, I've I've always been a huge supporter of his work. Always, we Still have. Am. <laughs> you know, the, the book is called Saved, and and one of the most moving parts of the book is when Ben, when you talk about the blackness after the bomb and you compared it to death. And then you talk about the voice that you heard in that moment. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. Well, that was the moment after the second bomb had landed and I blacked out and I had a number of the facial injuries, the shrapnel in the eye and the throat and I was all but gone. And I was in the, still in the car and into this blackness came my daughter, and really my daughters, all of them. And um, I could see my daughter on her right in front of me. And she was as lifelike as anything. And she just said, Daddy, you've got to get out of the car. And 
it brought me back and I came back into the world and the car and the, the, fa the fire and I managed to drag myself out of the car just before the third bomb hit the car itself. And really that day it was my family who saved me. It was Alicia and my girls reminding me that there is something more to fight for. There's something great here. And, and, and that's what I thought every step of the recovery, get home. That's what it matters about. That's the important thing. And so that's what the battle was, how to get home. You know, Alicia, as a mom, I have three kids too. They're older than your beautiful little girls. Okay. Um, what did you think when Ben told you that story? Oh, I was so proud of all of them for, for appearing to him. I, it also just reminds you how important your children are. I mean, I think um, for me, when I had children, that was... You, you, you then completely understand what it is to be a parent and that you're you're no longer the one that comes first it's it's them and you know ben benji getting out of that car i think is is also just he realized that this was not their fate and he needed to be there for them and he had to get out you know I, your girls are so young seven five and three years old I also think their, yeah. their names are so interesting in light of everything that, that has <laughs> happened, right? Um, you named them Honor yep. and Iris and Hero. Um, yep. Do those names have special meaning for you now, Alicia? I mean, I guess Hero's name for some reason makes, makes much more sense than it did when we named her. Um, it's a Shakespearean name, so mm -hmm. it, wasn't, it, did, it, it wasn't supposed to be that initially. Honor, we've just always felt had a very strong name, um, but pretty. And Iris means rainbow. So <laughs> it's, um, yeah, I, I, it, they're incredibly special children, incredibly special. And, and they've proved themselves to be even more special since this has all happened. I've, they've taught me so much uh, about what it is to, to love someone, I think. Yeah. We have a piece from the documentary that I, I want to play, which is about the tough decision that you made together to have Ben yep. do his um, physical and medical work in Texas while you stayed home. Watch this. The doctors think that a patient recovers best when their family are around them and that we should all move and live there. But we have three children and the priority through all of it was to make sure that they were not worried or upset. Hi, Daddy. I hope your operation was good, good. I didn't want them to see me badly injured. I just didn't think that that would be a, a healthy thing for a three-year-old, a five-year-old, and a seven-year-old to see. So my decision was to get better. How hard was that decision, Ben? And I know you, you both spoke with people who have experienced similar injuries and went through it, and they had different viewpoints for you. Yeah, and I think it comes back to what Alicia was saying, is that the priority had to be our daughters. And while it might have been great for me to have them by my side for many months, I knew it wouldn't be best for them. And I didn't want them to see me at their young age being so injured, unable to move. Mm -hmm. And um, so we made that difficult decision for me to get better. And for Alicia, back home, to keep the family together, try and keep that as stable as possible. We didn't want to uplift their lives when so much was already happening. And so we had to make that decision. And Alicia took over at home, and she did two jobs that for, for five months. She was a father and a mother and she took care of them and had to ask and answer questions we would never have had to answer from our children until many years later. And that's difficult. It's when you have to confront such big injuries and such a big event with young daughters. But she handled it absolutely amazingly and they have stayed so strong, so stable throughout. And I look back at it and it was just the perfect decision that we made and it may be different for other people, but we, we did it the right way, I think. I, I think you see so much great parenting in this story when you look at the way you guys handled this and um, you know it, we can talk about it in a moment but the, the book robot leg that Alicia just sort of left it in the house so they could look <laughs> at it and find it and that's what kids do and then the questions would sort of come out gradually in time and she would speak to them about the different layers of this in such a mature way but in a way that understood their age but I, I want to ask you about your decision to go back to to Germany to see Ben obviously the first time and then you said you went a second time to talk to Jock who is such a huge part of this story you both had you talk about angels Ben and you know it seems to me that Rick was an angel in London and Jock was an angel in Texas and all the way through from Ukraine he was a special person in this story and you went and asked him can you please go be with Ben 
because I can't. Tell us about that. Um, obviously, I'd already been to Langstall the first time, and I could see the, the state that, that Benji was in. Um, and then I went home and I did my research. I spoke to Sarah Verado, I sp spoke to Kim Dossier, I spoke to a number of military doctors in the UK, and they all gave me their verdicts and what he would need. And um, it just, he needed somebody there, and I, I, it needed to be someone that we could all trust. And mm. Jock just was that person. And when I went back the second time, I remember feeling so incredibly nervous because it also I, I never wanted to take credit for um, making that something that it was my idea because I, I actually think he probably would have gone without me having even of, of, of asked because like, he, he's, he's got a family. He knows also uh, what it takes to bring up children as, as I'm sure you do as well. Um, and I, I didn't even really even have to ask the question. I think I said two words about is this something that you would be able to possibly do? And he straight away said yes. And that was that. And two days later, I think it was, he went with Benji to Texas. So Jock had been my security guard yes. in Ukraine. He was the one who found the hospital I was in. He was there along the evacuation. And for the next five months, Jock was behind me when I fell. He picked me off the ground. We were in the same room. He was the person who moved me around. And I couldn't have done this without him. And that was why he was so, no. such a, a key part of, of the recovery. Yeah, well, you know, such a key part. I mean, most of the decisions we, we made would not have been made unless someone like Jock um, was there. Yeah. We, it, it wouldn't have been possible. He's humble and just uh, such a hero in this incredible story. And you just, you feel like your heart yeah. go to him throughout this whole story of what an incredible, selfless uh, person he was, a superhero in every sense yeah. of the word, as so many of the people are in this story. Absolutely. You know, I want to ask you real quick, Ben, um, you said when you left Texas, that people prepared you. The doctor said, look, your life is going to be different and your relationships, your family, all of it, you know, you have, it's going to be challenging at times. Mm -hmm. Talk about that. Well, I think many people pay attention to what happens in the hospital. Can you walk again, have your wounds healed? But actually, the, it is much harder when you go home and you have to take these injuries back because life changes at home. There are many things that I would have done at home that I can't do, and Alicia does them for me. And so I knew I was going home and that life would be different, and Alicia would have so much more to do. And I suppose I was always very worried that the pressure w would disrupt our lives. It would be too hard. But it just comes down to marrying the most incredible woman who has stuck and done everything for me every single step of the way. And, uh, no, but, no, no, no. He's just <laughs> saying he's being far too nice. <laughs> and we did it together. I mean, How we, so? Why is he being too nice, Alicia? <laughs> we did it together. It was a full team effort. It was a full team effort from all of us. The children, Benji, my parents, my, you know, my family was so supportive. My mum was there. My dad was there every step of the way. My sister, my two sisters. So... You know, we've all had so much support, so we really have got through this with so much kindness from other people as well. So what are the lessons, you know, we talked a little bit about this in an earlier conversation, Alicia, but, you know, what are the lessons to you from, from this now that you're on this, this side of it and Benji survived yep. and he's home? Oh, just how important it is to be kind to people, to, have, to, to be kind and small gestures it, it's taught me, hopefully, if this was to ever happen to someone that I knew, that, you know, reach out. There is, there's no harm that is done by reaching out and offering more um, than doing the opposite. Because I think sometimes people don't quite know what to do. They feel embarrassed. But the, every single letter that Benji received helped him. Every single letter, every single text, every single smile from people that didn't even know us but acknowledged that something had you know, happened and that they felt it. Mm -hmm. You can feel you can feel that human connection, and it's um, it's it's an amazing thing. And that is what got us through it. And it, it makes you just remember how important it is to be human and to um, help each other. You know, it, it, I go back to the beginning of this story just for a moment when you got a phone call um, from Suzanne Scott, and you said, "I looked at my phone, and you were, were already a little worried because you hadn't heard from." Ben that day and you guys yeah. were good at keeping in touch and you said you know that the call coming from New York it made you nervous yeah no really nervous I mean I, I, I it got to the end of the day and I, I think we'd slightly gotten used to a, an erratic time schedule because Ukraine was very busy and I never wanted to, to wake him up if he was 
finding time to, to sleep as such. Um, but no, you, it's, it's funny, I think you have a sixth sense and, and I, when I saw that number on my screen, I knew straight away that something was not, something wasn't right. Um, and yeah. And you made a phone call that your first time that you talked to Alicia, you said, give me my phone and you called your wife. What was that like for you when you heard her voice after pulling yourself up off the side of that road and getting as far as you did, Ben? Well, um, from all the videos you will see of when I was being evacuated early on, the one thing I keep asking for is my phone. It's all I wanted. I wanted to call home. <laughs> um, and I think if you ask Alicia, she'll just say that I was overly optimistic and said, everything was fine. Everything's great. I'm <laughs> fine. I'll be totally fine. I'm coming home. I'm fine. I'm coming home. And, and to me, that was yeah. everything. It honestly was a phone call that he sounded as though nothing had happened. He just, you know, don't worry, I'm in Poland. We'll, we're about to leave. We'll be fine. <laughs> um, <laughs> typical Benji. Yeah. But it, <laughs> it, um, you know, the book is called Saved. I know you've talked about your faith. You know, what, how, what role did that play for both of you? Ben. Well, I think certainly that um, when this happened and you have to, you know, my daughters had come to me. I think that they were like angels when they came to me. I really do. And I think I was in the middle seat of that car. And I think that in some sense was the death seat. It's incredible that I survived, that I'm the only one to have survived. It, it is a miracle. And so I think about that every day. And I think the, the core reminder is what Alicia said. This is about being good to people, about showing kindness to people, yeah. about supporting people. And, um, and, and that's what I think about all of this. Alicia? Yeah. He was given a second, of ch a second chance, and I think we're just incredibly grateful for that. So everything else aside, the girls have a father, I have a husband, and we'll, we'll get through it. And they like their dad's robot leg, right, Alicia? <laughs> <laughs> they do. It's interesting. Children, really, they're fascinating. They, they are aware of so much, but the things that you think would bother them, they just, they didn't. I, I actually asked somebody's advice um, who had a similar situation with children of a similar age. And she, when I asked her, she couldn't even remember how she told them. Mm. And until I told the girls, that's when I realized that's why she didn't remember because it's so insignificant in their worlds that they didn't even react. They were, you know, just overjoyed that he was coming home. They love their daddy and they were thrilled. Uh, they love their daddy. Home. And we're so thrilled to spend time with you as a family. Thank you both, Ben and Alicia, for talking to us today. Sacrifice and survival, trust me, do not miss it. Sunday night at 9 p.m., that is the story. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.